In this video, we will be describing the occlusal aspect of the permanent maxillary first molar. The permanent maxillary first molar, when you look at it from the occlusal aspect, is roughly rhomboidal in shape. The rhomboidal shape is mainly because of the two acute and two obtuse angles that the outlines form. The mesial marginal ridge and the buccal surface form an acute angle. Similarly, the lingual outline and the distal marginal ridge form an acute angle. If you look at these two angles, the mesiobuccal line angle is more acute than the distolingual line angle. Similarly, the distobuccal line angle and the mesiolingual line angles are obtuse angles, with the distobuccal line angle more obtuse than the mesiolingual line angle. When you look at this tooth from the occlusal aspect, you can appreciate five cusps. The mesiolingual, mesiobuccal, distobuccal, distolingual and the fifth cusp or the cusp of Kerabiri. In the order of the size, the mesiolingual cusp is the largest followed by the mesiobuccal, the distobuccal, the distolingual and the cusp of Kerabili is the smallest, which may or may not be present. When you look at these five cusps, the mesiolingual, mesiobuccal and the distobuccal cusps are the primary cusps. The distolingual and the fifth cusp are the secondary cusps. The three primary cusps form the maxillary molar primary cusp triangle. According to the cope osborne theory, in an evolutionary basis, the distolingual cusp disappears progressively from the first molar to second molar to the third molar. As you can see, the distolingual cusp is reducing in size as it goes from the first, second and the third molar. The fifth cusp is actually a finding of the first molar alone. It is absent in the second molar and in the third molar. The triangle that is formed by the primary cusp trigone is reflected in a cross section of the root. When you look at the cross section of the root, you can appreciate a triangular outline which is mainly because of the three primary cusps which reflect themselves in the root trunk. The other characteristic feature that you should appreciate are the triangular ridges. The mesiolingual cusp has two triangular ridges. The first triangular ridge goes towards the mesiobuccal cusp and joins the triangular ridge of the mesiobuccal cusp. The mesiolingual cusp also has another triangular ridge called as the distal triangular ridge which goes in an oblique direction and meets the triangular ridge of the distobuccal cusp. The joining of the distal triangular ridge of the mesiolingual cusp and the triangular ridge of the distobuccal cusp is called as the oblique ridge. The oblique ridge and the triangular ridge confluence forming the transverse ridge between the mesiobuccal and the mesiolingual cusps along with the distal slope of the mesiobuccal cusp and the mesial slope of the distobuccal cusp form the central fossa. The central fossa is a concavity which is formed in the center. In the central region, you have the central pit. From the central pit, there are three important grooves or the sulcate grooves that radiate. These three radiate roughly at an angle of 120 degrees, three obtuse angles. The first groove is the buccal groove. From the central pit, which is roughly located in the center of the occlusal surface, buccally in between the two buccal cusps, you have a groove that extends on the buccal surface in somewhere in the middle of the buccal surface. This is the buccal developmental groove. The central developmental groove radiates in a mesial direction from the central pit, crosses the transverse ridge and ends at the mesial triangular fossa. From the area of the mesial triangular fossa, you have secondary developmental grooves which radiate towards the mesial marginal ridge. The triangular area which is formed here is the minor fossa 
the mesial triangular fossa. The central fossa is the first major fossa and the mesial triangular fossa is the first minor fossa. The other major fossa is located distal to the oblique ridge. This is a linear fossa that is observed which is confluent with the distal oblique groove. The groove follows the direction of the oblique ridge. It is called as the distal oblique groove. This distal oblique groove continues with the lingual groove and ends somewhere in the middle of the lingual surface. If the fifth cusp is prominent, you will also see the fifth cusp groove which ends at the ending point of the lingual groove. From the distal oblique groove, you have radiating secondary grooves which form a small triangular fossa along with the distal marginal ridge. This distal marginal ridge along with the secondary grooves form the distal triangular fossa. The oblique ridge that is formed by the distal ridge of the mesiolingual cusp and the triangular ridge of the distobuccal cusp, they slightly dip at the center. This depression is in line with the mesial and the distal marginal ridges. At this particular depression from the central pit, there is a groove that crosses the oblique ridge. This is called as the transverse groove of the oblique ridge. Let's have a look at these features on a natural tooth. So here you can make out the central pit with the three radiating grooves, the central groove, the buccal groove and the transverse groove of the oblique ridge. This is the distal fossa which is little more linear which is placed distal to the oblique ridge and it continues with the lingual groove. Here the fifth cusp is just formed as a small notch and you can appreciate the obtuse angle, the distobuccal line angle is obtuse and the mesiolingual line angle is obtuse. The mesiobuccal line angle is acute, so is the distolingual line angle. You can see the two marginal ridges which are formed by the confluence of the mesial cusp slopes in the mesial side and the distal cusp slopes in the distal side. These are the characteristic features of the occlusal aspect of the permanent maxillary first molar.